question about that. Well, there isn't. Uh, you ask anybody in the Big Ten, they'll tell you that. But not only that, but second best defense in the nation. They have eight members of that defensive unit that have started for three years or more. Now, that's tough defense. And when you have good defense, you're always in the ball game. But this is the best offense, Michigan, that they will have faced all season. Now, the Wolverines have got to come back from an emotional drop after that loss to Penn State last week. It was not only emotional loss, it was a physical bang them up, uh, knock them down kind of game. Well, there's no doubt that their confidence is shaken. That's, that's for sure. The thing the players need to remember is that they're playing the toughest schedule in the nation. They've been beaten by the number one and the number two ranked teams in the country. The key today for Michigan, can Gary Moeller motivate these guys, get them charged up the way he has done in the past for those other games? This is the 80th game in this particular series. Illinois has won and tied the last two at Michigan, but they have not won here at home since 1983. Today, Mrs. Margaret Grange participated at the pregame coin flip with team captains, referee Jim Kimberling. Of course, this is the 70th anniversary of the Memorial Stadium dedication game. That was the game that made Red Grange a household name forever. And we'll have some film of that remarkable performance for you a little later. It happened on my birthday, 1924. All right, Kelly. The Michigan Wolverines won the toss, and uh, they'll take the ball in the second half of play. So the Fighting Illini will get the ball first. It's an offense that is still a morning. It's still growing. And, of course, Greg Landry is the man now who has come from the professional ranks to tutor young Johnny Johnson and the other young quarterbacks in Illinois and rebuild the offense here as Lou Tepper succeeded John Makovic as the head coach. Remy Hamilton has become a considerable persona for the Michigan Wolverines dating back to the field goal that beat Notre Dame. And he's been prominent in each one of their games throughout the season. Martin Jones and Damian Platt are the people who are waiting for the Michigan kickoff. Beautiful day. It's about 72 degrees. Remarkably pretty clear day in the Midwest. The kick goes a yard deep in the end zone for Platt. And Damian Platt has a pretty good return to the 30-yard line. And there the Illini will go to work. And coming onto the field is a young man who, perhaps in the mind of some, dares fate. He wears 13 willingly. You see the numbers that he possesses in 1994. I should also tell you that he has thrown 168 passes without an interception. The Alina will line up with Holcomb and Douthert behind him. Uh, Douthert is a sophomore, and Holcomb is a true freshman. People in the backfield are pretty young. And Johnson goes quickly to the air. The ball is off the shoulder pad of Jason Dulick, who was looking to run before the ball got there. Here are the people now, and we'll define them for you. Holcomb is 5'11", 187, true freshman, Mesa, Arizona. Douthert is the fellow who had a big ball game against Michigan a year ago, won by the Illini 24-21. Dilger, the big tight end, is a big target for Johnson. Michigan showing right now at the beginning a five-man front. And on second down and ten, they go to Douthert, the sophomore out of Cincinnati. He is at 206 pounds and will hit you with some authority. He picks up about seven yards on that carry. Now, these are the people that have to open the door for them. Charles Edward has moved into a starting spot at left tackle, and he's going to be eyeballing uh, some people like Jason Horn today. So Edwards has got to step up and have a good ball game for them. Otherwise, it's a pretty solid group of people. They're big enough, running around 285, 290, 295. So they're plenty big enough. And now they're strong to the left side, double wide up there. And out of the shotgun, a penalty flag. Jim Kimmerling is the referee. Dead ball. False start on the offense. Now let's check in with Lynn Swan. Keith, this game is very much a game about character and attitude for the Michigan Wolverines. 
Before this game began, I talked to Gary Moeller on the sideline. He says, you know, you go out and you recruit young men who's got some character and have a will to win, and you have a heartbreaking loss like we did last week against Penn State, and you have to believe that they're going to go out and play as hard as they can. He said, during the week, they worked as hard as they've ever worked. He thinks they've got the right attitude and should play a strong game. Keith? Well, today's game uh, could make or break their season, really. Because they could still play in a New Year's Day bowl game, and they get after Johnson, knock him off balance, but he's very agile, very athletic quarterback. As a man on the sidelines, the ball is thrown out of bounds. It is incomplete. Jasper Strong was scrambling and starting to come back to his quarterback. As soon as he saw Johnson had run back into the sideline, he came that way, but the ball was out of bounds, and we've got a Michigan man hurt on the field. It'll be 91, I believe, the outside linebacker, Matt Dyson, for the University of Michigan. Dyson almost had Johnson in the pocket for a sack. He has had some injury problems. He had a broken bone in his foot. He is, he is the best defensive lineman for the University of Michigan. It'd be a big loss to lose him. Jason Horn, Tony Henderson, and Trent Zinkowicz line up as the down people for Michigan. Zinkowicz had a huge game against Penn State, nine solo tackles. Waldrop moves up to an outside linebacker position, replacing Price as the start of this week. Dyson plays the other outside position. Inside, Jared Irons and Steve Morrison. Very good people. Secondary has been shaken up. Deion Johnson is not here. Uh, Tyrone Noble gets the call there. And uh, Diolo Anderson steps in at strong safety. Time still out on the field for the Michigan man. Lou Tepper, the Fighting Illini coach, has always been of a defensive cut. He's been involved in defense all of his coaching life. Brett Larson, the punter for the Illini, just shot a howitzer into the autumn sky. 51 yards and no return, so Michigan's going to have to start at about their own 18-yard line. The Illinois kicking game is very good, and as we noted at the very beginning, the defense is very good. Todd Collins, the quarterback for the Michigan Wolverines, in his career has piled up a lot of yards on a team that really doesn't live with the pass. They use it, but they don't live with it. So he's having a pretty good year. He had his string of 132 consecutive passes broken without an interception on the last play for Michigan last Saturday when Brian Miller intercepted him as Penn State won that ball game. They opened with Tyrone Wheatley and Shea Foster lined up behind Todd Collins. Give it to Wheatley. And Wheatley, who has had some big days against this Illinois team, moves the football out to the 24-yard line. The backs and receivers now for Michigan. Wheatley, of course, uh, we point out because we're sure that he's going to be a prime factor in whatever happens here today. And so will Amani Toomer, who had a big ball game last week in the loss to Penn State. It'll be second down. They need about three. Here comes Wheatley looking for the outside and the Illini turning. They smelled him coming that way and there was five of them there waiting for him led by Mickey Johnson, the nose tackle, a junior out of Galesburg, Illinois. The offensive front for Michigan is anchored by Rod Payne. Jay Reimer, a former quarterback, is the tight end, as you know. But he lines up alongside these big people, and they are an improving blocking unit. Runyon, perhaps, is the best of the bunch along the front. So it is third down and three. Toomer is the man to the bottom of the picture. Collins is back, gets a little heat from the blind side, turns it upfield, and will pick up the first down himself. And runs the football all the way out to the 43, where it'll be first down for Michigan. You don't see Collins do that much of that. But he sure had a lot of room in front of him. Simeon Rice, 97, is a man who figures to torment Collins all afternoon. This is a very good core of linebackers. Howard, Holosek, and Hardy. I would suggest to you as good as anybody. Probably the best in the country. Secondary, these are corners and safeties. The safeties particularly are a little bigger in size than you might normally find. They're both around 200 pounds. First down for the Illini. The ball on the 43. Collins back. 
wants to go deep has Toomer over there and he's got it and he's out of bounds at the 24 yard line of Illinois. He got in front of Scott Turner and Turner at 5'9", 178 is going to have a hard time with six foot 494 pound Armani Toomer. One of the things that uh, Illinois will give you is some big plays. Watch as he's going to come down, break to the inside, and then break back to the outside, to the top of your screen. No play action on first down. Gets the corner to come in. There's a lot of room to the outside to throw it. And uh, Collins makes his uh, completion. Nice play. First big play for Michigan. At the Illini, 24-yard line, first down. Give it to Wheatley. Up the middle he goes. Puts his shoulder into a linebacker and rights him backwards and he's taken down at the 16 yard line. That is a pickup of eight yards and let's find about out about Matt Dyson from Lynn Swamp. Well, Keith, I don't think it's too serious at this moment. They feel like he twisted his ankle on the turf. That's what he told the trainers. They're thinking about possibly changing the shoes. I will tell you that before the game, several people commented to me on hard, how hard and how much this artificial surface stopped the ball player. So it might be a concern to several people throughout this game, Keith. Well, when you're used to playing on grass. This is the only game, only yep. game uh, Michigan will play on turf this year. Different. Collins gives it to Wheatley. He's pinned behind the line of scrimmage. At the 18-yard line, John Holosek, number 52, is the man. John is 6'2", 229, senior out of Snicker, Illinois. He was an all-Big Ten performer last year. Missed a couple of games earlier this year with an ankle injury, but he is big time. Sometimes he's overshadowed by Dana Howard, who plays linebacker right next to him, but they are both outstanding performers. Bianca Batuka comes into the ball game, the 205-pound sophomore from Quebec, replacing Tyrone Wheatley. And a penalty flag. That came from Jim Kemmerling, the referee. Illegal substitution, 12 men in the huddle on the offense. So a careless mistake by Michigan. That's a good way to put it, too, Keith, because it is careless. It's a late substitution. It's not to deceive anybody, but it's just a change of mind when you're calling plays. Sometimes you'll get caught. Well, in the first quarter of uh, play this year, Michigan has not done well, and they've certainly not done very well in the fourth quarter either. In the first quarter, uh, the opposition's outscored them 39-13 this year. In the fourth quarter, they've been outscored 55-36. Yeah. They've been held on wheels in the second and yeah. third. Well, and they've been behind in every game, and they have led in every game, has Michigan. Just slow starters. Tied up. So things are getting off to kind of a bumpy start here, even though they did have the one big play. Beachwood aged Budweiser. It's always been true, this Bud's for you. The 25th anniversary diamond necklace for a brilliant celebration of your loving marriage. American Airlines, something special in the air. And Carrier, we're the inside guy. So now Michigan trying to get everybody on the same page. Sitting down here with an opportunity. And they started at this point, first down and 10. Now they are third down and 10. And they run it with Bianca Matuka. And he's belted out of bounds down inside the 18 yard line. And that'll get the Michigan kicking team on the field. Remy Hamilton, the place kicker. Conservative call. I think Michigan just wanted to get an opportunity to get on the board first. It'll be a 35 yard try. Hamilton is 10 out of 10 from this distance on this season. Is down the kick is away and he got it. squeezed it inside the left and right and Michigan takes the lead three to nothing now here is Lynn Swan 
Kate Redgrange is one of the great heroes of the University of Illinois, and they have wonderful things to commemorate his memory here. I'm with his wife, Margaret Grange. There's a beautiful limestone block, 39,000 pounds. A plaque is going to be put on there. How do you feel about that? How do you think Red would feel about these honors? I think he would be very, very proud of this. And, um, well, it's, it's almost mind-boggling. <laughs> Uh, he always, I just hope they remember his teammates, too, as well as he. I, I think they certainly will. You know, I was told that you went in and talked to the football team before the game began. Can you tell us what you told them? Well, I tried to stress two points. One, that what Red liked about football most was that it was a team sport. <coughs> Excuse me. And that there was no one-man football team. Each person was just as important. Uh, as the next. Well, Margaret, certainly if they take that message to heart, the Fighting Illini are going to have a good chance this afternoon. And the other point I tried to make was that Red always stressed the fact that they should try to get the best education they could because there is life after football. Margaret, thank, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Lynn, for having me. Keith? Wheaton, Illinois. What a lovely lady, huh? Yep. Fun. She's had a grand time. What a nice weekend for her. This is Martin Jones from the six yard line finding daylight in the middle. And the Illini special teams again give the offense a reasonable starting position up at the 29 yard line. This is the kind of a ball game. I think special teams will have a they'll have that play a part, a big part in a game like this. And, and, and both head coaches, Keith, coach for the most part all of the special teams. I know Lou Tepper is very involved in the special teams and it takes a lot of pride in it. Same offensive alignment with Douthard, the single back. And the man in motion is Jason Dulick, number 83. Johnson hands it to Douthard. And they go to an offensive set that they abused the Wolverines with last year, with Douthard doing most of the heavy work. Big sophomore from Cincinnati. Greg Landry of the Chicago Bears, and he also coached the Bears. He played for the Detroit Lions for so many years. Is on the staff, is the offensive coordinator for the Illini, and likes to use a lot of different formations. And we'll, we'll see a lot of those during the ball game. Trevor Price is in at the outside linebacker position, replacing Matt Dyson, who is out with a foot injury. He finds out that again, and this time in the middle, there's a fellow named Morrison, Irons, and Henderson, and Zinkowitz. And uh, no room. Coming up next Saturday on ABC Sports, college football doubleheader at 12 noon Eastern, 11 Central. A battle of the unbeatens. Number three, Colorado. Number two, Nebraska. Live from Lincoln. It's a full national coverage of that game. And following Colorado, Nebraska, here's the lineup of regional action. Call your cable operator for any pay-per-view games that might be available for you if you'd like to see them. Check your local listings for the games on free television. Back goes Johnny Johnson. Takes off. He will burn you with that kind of running to the 47 and a first down. And now let's join John Thompson. Keith, you've got Johnny Johnson scrambling where you are. We've got a scrambling quarterback as well. Southern against Alcorn State, Steve McNair. 22 yards in a first down here. Alcorn leads 22-14. With this run, McNair passes Ty Detmer to become the all-time leader in Division I for total offense. Keith. Hey, John. First quarter of play, we've got Michigan leading three to nothing. Over the University of Illinois and the Illini. Pick up, Illini pick up a first down at the 47, and Johnson back again. Again, has room up the middle. And he will get about five yards on that play as Tyrone Noble, number 42, comes in to make the play. Noble started at the cornerback position today instead of Deion Johnson. Johnson with a bruised thigh did not come to Champaign. Well, and Lloyd Carr, the defensive coordinator for Michigan, unhappy with some of the play, has shifted around the defensive, uh, the safeties. Um, Clarence Thompson started at free safety, and Diallo Anderson started at strong safety. So three new uh, position starters was put it that way in the secondary for Michigan today but the problem is they're doing too good a job and Johnson's taking off with the football and run it 
This is Gothard. First down for Illinois at the Michigan 41. sophomore who played as a true freshman last year and led this Illini offense not only in rushing but also in receiving. They say he is a tough kid. He's got a defensive mentality and he says a lot of the defensive coaches would love to have him at linebacker. The only problem on this team, he wouldn't get near the field at linebacker. No. <laughs> He's better off where he is. Put it on the 40, just short of the 40 and it's first down. Johnson falling down. Ball loose. And Michigan may have it. Michigan does have it. So Illinois is a victim. The lineman stepped back exactly. from block, stepped on Johnson's foot. I think it was he was falling down and couldn't get the ball. I think it was this. I think it might be the center. Watch the center. Yep. I think it was. Did he, did he step on him or did he just trip him? Trip him. Yeah. But Jared Irons is a fellow who came out of there with a the football for Michigan and so on the turnover the Wolverines have it first down at their own 41 yard line. Now the center was on his foot Michigan is second in the Big Ten in fumble recoveries and there they came up with another one. John Ritchie checks into the backfield and back there with uh, Tyrone Wheatley. And this is Wheatley just trying to follow his offensive line surge and get it up to about the 45 yard line. Well, both lines are standing at the 44, so it'll be a three yard pickup for Wheatley. Bianca Batuka checks in now. He's number 21. Wheatley is number six. Wheatley weighs 226. Bianca Batuka, 205. But Timmy is more of a slashing runner. Can slash inside and seemingly do a little better, whereas Wheatley powers inside and burns you up outside. Todd Collins to the sideline. Man is wide open. It's Amani Toomer, and it's a first down Michigan at the Illinois 42 yard line. Todd Collins had his best game last year, yardage wise, as we take a look at one on one. Toomer on Crumpton. Crumpton is one of those three-year starters. Collins had his best year, best game last year, throwing 283 yards and three touchdowns because most of the time Illinois leave their their corners to cover the wide receivers one on one. They want their safeties stopping the run. On the first down play, give it a quick lead, cuts back into the middle and picks up a yard, and that'll do it. Chad Koffer, senior out of East Dundee, Illinois, a defensive tackle, made part of that hit at least. Jason Edwards, number 92, is the other tackle, and Mickey Johnson is in the middle. They, they, they are the unsung heroes, those defensive linemen. I'm talking about Koffer, Edwards, and Johnson. Uh, they keep the offensive linemen off of the linebackers, Keith, and allow them a free roam to make all the tackles. Wheatley the single back. Second down and nine. Collins to throw. This time Illinois pressure gets him at Simeon Rice number 97. That is the 40th career tackle for a loss for Simeon Rice. Number 97 to the left of your screen. Number 97 on 77, that's Terzell Jenkins. Oh, I'm sorry, it was came from the other side. Yes. Rice Jimmy from the other Rice. side. Yeah. But anyway, Rice leads career-wise, leads Illinois in sacks. That is his 30th sack in 30 games played. Third down. And 18. Collins. To the tight end, Jay Remersma. And he's knocked out of bounds just inside the 45. And it was Hardy, Kevin Hardy, over there covering on the play. So Michigan is going to have to kick the ball away, coming away empty after getting the turnover at their own 41. And the Michigan offense continues to look very uneven in the first quarter of play. 
This will be Craig Baker's first punt of the day. And waiting to return it will be Martin Jones for the Illini. Not enough breeze to worry about. Couldn't have a nicer day. Pretty good kick. Headed for the corner, but turns back. Kicks into the end zone, and it'll come out for the 20, where Illinois will have it, as Michigan leads in the first quarter, 3 to nothing. I don't say this to many people, but the job we do is the most important job I can think of. Okay, guys, listen up. Like what his wife said, that he would, he would want to uh, his uh, linemen and the rest of his teammates to be remembered today also. First down for Illinois. At the 20 yard line, it's Douter. He's tackled behind the line of scrimmage. They got him back around the 17. Jason Horn, the number 94, 6'5, 277 pound junior from Lafayette, Indiana. I expect that we will call Jason's number quite a bit before this day is over. That front three for Michigan has been playing well of late, and especially Horn. He has had three sacks in the last two weeks. Zinkowitz had a good game oh, last week also. Oh, he had a awesome. terrific game. Yeah. He really did. So it's second down and about 13. Holcomb, the true freshman who got away from the folks out in Arizona. And there isn't much there for him. He'll get it up to around the 21. Tonight on ABC's family movie, John Ritter is a parent with his hands more than full and problem child, too. And then will a good cop turn dirty? All new commish tonight on ABC. Who writes those? <laughs> From the 22 yard line, third down. Johnson out of the shot. All range of fellow. This time he cannot step away. The pressure was coming and coming and coming, and finally Ben Steele got there, and down he went. Well, Steele's probably getting number 81, the right side of your screen. Dilger, the tight end, is blocking, and that's a mismatch. A defensive end as good as Steele is against the tight end. The punt is out of the end zone. The fair catch is called, and uh, Illinois is going to get dinged on it. They didn't give him enough room to have an unobstructed effort at catching the ball, and it may have been a little deceptive on the part of Toomer. Exactly. They could probably call that either way because he gave a real late signal and a quick one. Yeah. Well, let's see what Jim calls it. Kick catch interference yeah. on the kicking. Goes against Illinois. You think the fans, they know what the rule is. I mean, they know that he gave a late, quick signal. Was within two yards, regardless of whether there's a signal or not. Well, what he said there, Kimberling said, regardless whether there was a signal or not, you got to give him room to catch it. So you even if he didn't give a signal, yeah. you can't hit him before he catches the ball. He's entitled to his two yards. He's entitled to catch the ball. Yes. Try right. two yards being the rule of thumb. We'll take another look at it. Well, he gave a signal right there, yep. and it was late. But you have to give him room to catch it, whether he does the signal or not. That puts Michigan on the Illinois 45-yard line, and the defense is all heated up. And it's number 55, Kevin Hardy, with his second tackle of the ball game, the big 239-pounder out of Evansville, Indiana. Hardy, with that big frame at 6'4", is going to grow to a bigger guy. We know that, and he probably, in, in, in real truth, may be the most obvious professional prospect in that linebacking pool. I, I think you're right on, and I think uh, a lot of people know that. <laughs> Just say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bianca Matuka checks in now. The loss is back across the 45. It'll be second down 11 from the 46, and Todd Collins throws, and it is incomplete. He was looking for Reamer Smar. Reamer Smar got into a collision with Holosek, but there's no flag. We 
remember now, Illinois is the number two defense in the nation. They are the top defense in the Big Ten, and that's why Gary Moeller is having a little trouble getting his offense on track. Well, that's right. And there's a look at the defensive coordinator, Denny Marson. Had a nice chat with him yesterday. He says, uh, yeah, he says, we got some creatures. Now, translated, that means we got some guys that can rush the passer and can really play. <laughs> I'm good at translating. You know, I've been doing it for seven, eight years with you. <laughs> You've been here eight years. <laughs> Ball is completed to Remersma, the tight end, and he picks up a first down. The Illini sold out and went after Collins. That left a hole over there on that side, and when your linebackers are blitzing, the tight end is going to have some room. And it's a nice play by Remersma because he caught that ball well short of the first down and took it down and uh, picked up an important first down for Michigan. 33 yard line where it's a first down on the Illinois side of the field. Michigan was 0 of 9 in third down situations last week against Penn State. So picking up a third down is big for them this week. Yeah, that's huge. <laughs> They're 2 of 4 today. Collins under heat, got some room, takes off. Taken down. After about a six yard run, Holosek, number 52, had him in his sights. And I mean, old John was pumped up and he was going to lay a lick on it. And Holosek and the rest of the Illini defenders know that when Collins takes off, he is going to try and run when he scrambles. Uh, Marson was telling me that yesterday. He says some quarterbacks scramble to throw, but Collins scrambles and he runs. He doesn't even look to throw, he's, he's going to run. Jay Foster, the fullback in front of Bianca Batuka. Bianca Batuka with the ball into the middle. And Dana Howard is the first man to hit him, and that's the first time we've called him. And it's tackle number 523 in Dana Howard's career. And after one, it's Michigan three, Illinois nothing. I offer you this, uh, Drew Esikoff, our director, and Bob Goodrich, our producer, showing you this because uh, you can't read what it says. It's the only scoreboard that's available to our perspective, and the sun hitting it at the particular angle that it shines on the scoreboard right now, you cannot read it. From our angle, you can't read it. No. Uh, maybe a lot of the fans in the stands can read it. But we're not being careless with the time of the game. We just don't know what it is. <laughs> If you go down on field level and look up at it, then you probably can see it all right. But here we go. Third down. And two. And Michigan with the ball. That's Bianca Batuka cutting it over tackle. And he picks up the first down to the 21. And Dana Howard gets his second tackle of the ball game. That's what I mean about being a slashing runner. There wasn't much of a hole there, but he got his plant yep. and got his power and, and got the first down. Quick enough feet to slide to the next hole. Look at the blocking here. Simeon Rice, 97, sack master, blocking, uh, being blocked by Reimersma. Doesn't come off the block. A lot of teams are trying to run at Simeon Rice because he is a great pass rusher, but he is not real strong yet anyway against the run. And he comes so hard sometimes you can brush him well, off. He's a way. puppy. Marson says he's just a puppy. Bianca <laughs> Batuka. Across the 20 and down to about the 18-yard line. So the Wolverines leading 3-0, threatening again. And let's check in with Swanee. Keith, you and Bob were talking about the sun and how it affects the uh, scoreboard down there. Michigan having turned it around here in the second quarter in the best position now to throw the football because they're not looking back into the sun. That's important inside the 20. They're having a tough time running against the Illini. Right now, they're in a great position, in the best position to put the ball in the air for the receiver. Well, yeah, you say that, Lenny, but what about the quarterback? He's got to look into the sun. Yeah, but Bob, he's not looking up. He's looking downfield. As long as he doesn't look up and to his right, he's okay. All right. <laughs> oh, man, they're protecting their turf. <laughs> this is Tyrone Wheatley with a power run up the middle, and he's very close to another first down. Looks like probably a yard short. First quarter numbers. Michigan uh, had the ball 17 plays and made four first downs. Uh, total yardage in favor of Michigan and the one turnover on the fumble uh, by the quarterback Johnson. Mercury Hayes has not seen the ball today. He's the wide man, top of the picture. 
Third down and a yard for the first down. Give it a Wheatley penalty flag. Two men in motion. Yep, Jim Kimberling threw the flag. Michigan shoots itself in the foot again. And that is a critical down because they had the first down picked up. Illegal motion on the offense. Five yards, third down. This Illinois defense is tough enough to move the ball without uh, giving them a first down uh, back and trying to make a first down again when you just uh, picked it up. Thomas Gwines is walking around very gingerly, number 75, the offensive right tackle out of Kankakee, Illinois, but he's going to stay. You play on turf seldom, and you have a lot of foot trouble. Getting used to it. Bianca Matuka lines up in the backfield. It is now third and six. Collins back. Throws underneath to Seth Smith. There's another penalty flag behind the line of scrimmage. And Smith is taken down short of the first down, or maybe uh, where they put that ball down, it, would, it might well be a first down. But let's see about the flag first. Holding Michigan. My goodness. Well, that may have been the second first down that Moeller's Wolverines picked up, that it's going to come back. Wines is really dragging that foot. It's about an 18 yard penalty. Could be. It's all the way back to the 35. The 35 yard line, and two plays ago they had been at the 10 yard line for the first and goal from the 10. You just can't do this and move the ball against the second best defense in the nation. Wines is out now, and Sullivan replaces him at tackle. He had to come out. Right now, the Wolverines are out of field goal range. Ball is on the 35. They've got to go inside the 11, so they need 24 yards here on third down. Three-man rush. Collins gets it off down the middle. He hits Mercury Hayes. He's got the ball inside the 15, right in front of the goal post. And it's a field goal opportunity now for Hamilton, Remy Hamilton. Nice job by Todd Collins to slide up in the pocket and by Hayes to find some area in the middle of the field. You have more time since it's only a three-man rush. And that was a big play to get Hamilton a little bit closer for the field goal try. Michigan trying to build on its 3-0 lead. Jay Remersma, the tight end, will hold it, former quarterback, and Bolash snaps it. And it's a 32-yard try, so he's good from 35, trying from 32. The kick is up, and it's good. And so Michigan builds its lead to 6-0 in the first half. National title hopes and the conference crown are on the line when Colorado tackles Nebraska. It's part of a special doubleheader next Saturday on ABC. With 11 minutes and 18 seconds to go in the first half of play, 6 0 now, Michigan leading Illinois, and Remy Hamilton will kick it off. Martin Jones and Damian Platt waiting for it for the Illini. High short kick. Popped it up. Taken by a short man upfield and a pretty good return. A tight end gets the ball back up to about the 39. It's Matt Cushing, number 86, carrying the ball. Monday night, ABC Sports goes to Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Randall Cunningham, Herschel Walker, and company. The Philadelphia Eagles hosting the Houston Oilers. That'll be at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. On ABC's Monday Night Football. And if you missed last Monday night's game, uh, you missed one of the all-time classics with Montana and Elway. Of course, it was uh, at the end of the game, and uh, but it was exciting. Holcomb and Dothard are the deep people out of the eye formation now. They break the eye and put Holcomb in motion. He's the young man from Arizona, which means he can run. Down the field, they go. Scott Weaver at quarterback for Illinois, and the pass intended for Jasper Strong falls incomplete. 
And so for the first time, the Illini change quarterbacks and go deep on his first play. Scott Weaver is from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, a sophomore. Six to nothing, Michigan leading with about uh, 11 minutes and change remaining in the first half of play on a sunny afternoon in Champaign, Illinois. Ball is on the 39 yard line. This is a key ball game in the whole structure of things at the Big Ten Conference. This is Holcomb and the freshman tailback turns up field for a couple of yards on second down and 10. The Purdue Boilermakers, who were undefeated, had a tie, lost today to at Ohio State to the Buckeyes. So Penn State idle remains on top, but there's a lot of folks sitting in there at two and one. Keith Weaver in the ball game. This is planned. Uh, he is the backup quarterback. The third series of the game. Uh, Greg Landry, the offensive coordinator. I think it's a good idea. Get the backup. He knows he's going to be in. Keeps him alive a little bit. And lets the uh, starter get on the sideline and watch for a, for a series. Plus the fact he's pretty good. Drills that ball to his tight end. It's Jason Dewey, the flanker. Another Big as a tight end, 6'5", 197, a sophomore out of St. Louis. And Dulick, who leads the team in receptions, has that one delivered right to his numbers. There's the old quarterback, Greg yes, Landry. Nice chat with him yesterday, and uh, I agree with what he's doing. Uh, I think this is fine. Get your other quarterback in. The starter gets on the sideline. He relaxes a little bit. He sees what's happening from the sideline, and he knows he's going to go in the next series or maybe the one after that. On first down from the Michigan 48, Weaver's pass is completed. He drilled it and completed it to Martin Jones, another sophomore out of Cincinnati. And moved the change, the Illini creating their first threat of the ball game. So Scott Weaver comes off the bench for his programmed appearance. And what it's doing for Johnson right there is he was 0 for 2. He had to scramble a few times. It's telling him, hey, those guys are really getting open. And when I get back in there, I may be a little bit more patient, a little bit more calm and wait for him. Now third in motion from the 34. First down, Weaver gets it away down the middle. It is complete. Down to the two-yard line, Jasper Strong. Teams are finding that they can throw the ball with success down the middle against Michigan. He wants to throw the ball to the left. Then he comes back to the right. And Anderson, number 20, doesn't get deep enough, doesn't stay deep enough. And Weaver throws it over his head as he was getting hit. Weaver now coming in for his programmed appearance, and it's not anything but that three out of four 57 yards to three different receivers in this possession and he looks to throw it into the end zone now takes off with it now throws it touchdown on the field except on the two yard line that probably would not have worked because the linemen would have all been downfield. But don't they say anything more about being a weaver being programmed because that was not programmed. That was not programmed. Yeah. No. But being in there was. But that was a nice scramble. Chris Richardson for the extra point. Good. And Illinois goes to the lead and Michigan continues a trend. They have trailed in the second quarter of every ball game this season. Greg Landry calling the plays. First down pass. Weaver could have made it if he just took the ball straight ahead there. Now he needs it. I need to get rid of this ball. I don't want to take a sack. And he finds somebody wide open. Michigan not quick enough to get there before he gets rid of it. And Weaver knows I've done well. Top light. Lesson. So Scott Weaver from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, comes in 
puts his team in the lead seven to six. Stouter is a senior. That was the first catch of his career. A fifth year senior at that. Here's the kickoff. It's not that deep. And that's news in the case of the Illini kicker and Michigan. Seth Smith brings it back from good field position at the 30 yard line. Bert, Brett Schuplein normally kicks it beyond the field of play. Yes, he does. Here's a look at that last touchdown, just the very end of it. You know, Weaver has great vision to be able to know where he is and see and pick up his receivers in the end zone. Stelter will buy him supper tonight. Five years and finally getting a TD pass. Yeah, he's a third string tight end. Doesn't get in that all. All right, here we go with Tyrone Wheatley, single back for Michigan. They trail by a point. And Todd Keller rolls out and looks. He's got his tight end way down the middle, throws underneath the coverage and gets a first down out of it at the 43-yard line. And here's some news about the Utes of Utah in their ball game against Colorado State. John Saunders. Well, Keith, as you know, this is the latest in a season. Two teams out of the whack without a loss. Anthony Hill, those picked off by Kareem Leary. 40 yards on this interception return for a touchdown. They also have a safety. Utah doing it with defense number one across the board, but Colorado State is inside the five right now. Keith. But it was the move of Sonny Lubick to his what amounts to his home territory, and he, he, as much as anybody, has restored defense to the WAC football conference. Previously, it was all offense, and this is Wheatley running into a sticky wicket of a defense here in Champaign Illinois the gain is two yards up to the 45 where Jason Edwards makes the tackle Wheatley now nine carries in the ball game for 24 yards and Wheatley was a little bit under the weather this week earlier at Michigan missed some practice had a little virus Ball on the 45 yard line. 20 <laughs> Squads number 75 is sitting on the bench with an ice pack on his left knee. They say the knee is bruised. He's just going to wait and see how it feels. Try and keep the ice bag on it. Down the he could be back in the ball game. Incomplete forward pass. Penalty flag is thrown. They get an interference call. Scott Turner, they're picking on him. Turner had him beat. There was contact. As the just before, I think, the ball arrived. It's a 15-yard penalty in college football. If it's beyond the 15 yards on the spot of the foul. Toomer could have caught that ball. It looked yep. a lot like the pass that he almost made last week against Penn State. There's it bottom of your screen. Turner is in the dark blue. Should have caught that ball. Yep. And where was the interference? I didn't see the interference in that shot. Turner has great speed, the defensive back. In fact, he is the two-time 400-meter champion in the Big Ten. So all kinds of speed. They ask him to cover. Illinois, their corners only have to cover. They don't ask him to come up and tackle. The safeties handle all that. It's pretty nice if you're playing coverage corner for Illinois. First down for Michigan. Ball at the 40-yard line. Penalty flags again. All over the place. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. So the Michigan Wolverines, I think, showing you in this first half of play the effects of that loss last week to Penn State. Concentration is one of the factors that you have trouble with after you've had a hard week. Moeller said earlier in the week that, that the two worst games that they played last year were on artificial turf, the loss at Wisconsin and also a loss at Michigan State. As we mentioned, the only game that they're playing this year on artificial turf is today. First down and 15 now, ball just beyond the 45. And Todd Collins gets it away. Not much there for Mercury Hayes. As Simeon Rice, believe it or not, turns him back inside. Stops him short of the 40-yard line. 
Rice number 97 defensive uh, or amounts to a defensive end position. They call him an outside linebacker. 6'5 and 243 a junior out of Chicago. Well, he is the number one sacker in the Big Ten. As we mentioned, he had just earlier in the game had his 30th sack of his career. Todd Collins on the day so far, seven out of eight for 103 yards. Illinois leading seven to six. Figured it'd be a relatively low scoring ball game. Bianca Batuka is the single back now for the Wolverine. He has it. And he goes down just about the line of scrimmage. You're not going to knock. Illinois off the line of scrimmage. Next Sunday, the PGA Tour's top money winners will be going for season-ending honors in the richest event on the tour, the Tour Championship. Olympic Club, San Francisco, final round action, live at 3 Eastern, 2 Central, and Pacific, here on ABC Sports. The Batuka, shaken up, gonna have to leave. Olympic. When you're not used to it, not used to having your feet stick to yeah. the stick on this artificial turf. A lot of foot and knee injuries. If your if your shoes are, it, it, it's too tacky. If if it is, I mean, obviously they bought several types of shoes to try out on this surface. It is third and twelve now for Michigan. Got a piece of him, but he shook him off. Now throws. Intercepted in the end zone. Robert Crumpton makes the interception. Here's a look at the receiver on the timing pattern. Now, he, he obviously is not the primary receiver because he's covered and he knows it. Now he just goes to a place that's open. Now, Collins threw the ball when he was open, but Tumor falls down and Crumpton, and Taze falls down, and Crumpton makes the play. His third interception of the year, and that's the only the third interception that Collins has thrown this year. We found an angle so we can see some time on the clock to help you understand how much time is remaining because from where we are we cannot read because of the angle of the sun on the clock what the numbers are. But it is Illinois football. They lead seven to six first down on the 20 yard line and Johnny Johnson is back in at quarterback. He's a junior out of North Chicago. Sets it up, goes to the sideline. Pass to Gilder, the tight end. He's got a first down. Johnny Johnson completes the pass. To the moves the football to the 32-yard line. Something, and you've got Trent Zankowicz hurt on the field for Michigan. The defensive tackle, junior out of Cleveland. Here's Delger here. He is an outstanding tight end. The play action is going to come this way. The quarterback is going to roll back. Dilger's going to just block, slow block, and then find his way out into the flat, and there's going to be nobody out there. When you uh, bring Johnson back in the ball game, the quarterback. Jared Irons is down on the other side of the field. Uh, you got two Michigan defenders who are hurt on the play with uh, Zinkowitz leaving, and Irons is still down on a knee. Incidentally, the uh, Alabama Ole Miss game has been delayed, stopped, in fact, by thunderstorms. And uh, for those of you who are watching us from Champaign, Illinois, when Alabama and Ole Miss are permitted to return to the field and resume play, we shall resume coverage of that game for you. In the meantime, we're glad to have you with us. The weather is perfect up here. Damon Benson comes in at defensive tackle now for Michigan. That's Dilger in motion. And the quarterback, Johnson, back to throw, setting up a screen pass for Douthard. And Michigan intercepts him just before he crosses the no man's land over there because one more block and he had some daylight. 
but the Wolverines got him. Well, and Lloyd Carr, the defensive coordinator, said earlier this week, he says I, says, I don't know how our defensive players are going to react. Their confidence is shaken a little bit, and that was before losing three defensive starters. Uh, Irons is out, Dyson is out, and Zinkowitz is out. Uh, Johnson, the starting corner, didn't make the trip, so they're playing. Now's a good time to get them. Dothert underneath, penalty flag on the play. First down, yardage picked up by Illinois, but let's see about the flag. You may have a hold coming here. Face mask. But it's against Illinois. Both of these teams are two of the highest penalized teams in the conference. Normally you associate a face mask call against the defense, but it doesn't have to be. We've seen it two or three times this year. Normally it happens, Keith, when you're pass blocking. Yep. The offensive lineman will grab the face of a defensive rusher and uh, hold on or gain control. So it's a 23 yard penalty because it's assessed from the spot of the foul and it takes the ball back to the 15 yard line. They will have to go beyond the 42 now to get a first down. Well, they need about 27 yards. <laughs> Illinois leading 7 0. Here's Dalton on a screen pass play the other way. And he gets it out to the 24 yard line. And there he is taken down. At the conclusion of the ball game today, the genuine Chevrolet most valuable player of the game chosen from each team, 24th year. Through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 has been donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each team and school. Each university's General Scholarship Fund, I should say. The ball is just short of the 24. It's third down and very long. Johnson, the quarterback, was scripted to come back in on the fourth series. Weaver is going to be the third series. Johnson's playing much better now that he was on the sideline, had an opportunity to look and see what was going on, and maybe he had a little pressure on him to come back and perform a little better. And timeout call. With Illinois leading Michigan by a point. Three minutes and 41 seconds to go in the second quarter of play. The Illini leading by a point. Both teams making a lot of mistakes here in the first half of play, in particular Michigan. They were in position on two occasions to score twice more and ruin their opportunities with their own mistakes. Johnny Johnson, the starting quarterback, uh, started the season and then didn't start the second and third game. And Greg Landry said he didn't want to study says that he thought he could do it on natural ability and uh, benched him for two games and Landry said you know no study no play Weaver came in did well and uh, Johnson got a chance came back in and now is, is playing very very well there at about 21 as Johnny Johnson sets up wants to go deep penalty flag is thrown as Johnson takes off they've got him short of the first down but there's two flags way back around the line of scrimmage from uh, where Johnson ran from, and it's a holding call against Illinois. So the run will not count. So well, these are just critical penalties against both teams. I mentioned that these are two of the most penalized teams in the conference. Ole Miss out to a 7 nothing lead and when they get that game resumed. If uh, Michigan declines a penalty, they will force Illinois to a punt because he did not pick up a first down. But it's, uh, he had a pretty good sized run, so instead of letting him punt the ball up around the 28 25, 28 yard line, they want to take him back around the goal line. And that makes sense under the circumstances, yes. I think. Uh huh, field position. Yep.
Gerald Irons, the uh, inside linebacker from Michigan who was out, is now back in the uh, game. Jared Irons has returned to the defense for Michigan. Johnson in the end zone, struggles to the goal line. Did he get out? Yes, he did. Just barely got out. Barely got out with the ball. And with the ball. Fred Larson then will be uh, will be putting from way in the back of the end zone. Fred Larson averaging better than 41 yards per kick. He's got to be careful here not to step out of the end zone. There's contact along the line of scrimmage. Kick is out. Larson's a very good punter. I was watching him in the pregame warm-up, and he can do a lot of things with that foot, including kick the ball a long way. Let's see about the penalty. Dead ball. Illegal snap on the offense. Half the distance. Fourth down. So now that uh, puts a little more pressure on Larson because it... Uh, Michigan is now in a position where he's standing a lot closer to the ball than he wants to be. He might choose to go after it. He gets it out. We work on this a lot in practice. Got a nice tumor. Knocked off balance at the 40 and falls down at the 38. Scott Turner, defensive back, was upfield to get a piece of the money and knock. Him off his feet. Credential halftime report. John Saunders will have scores and highlights, obviously. He will also have conversations with undefeated head coaches Terry Bowden of Auburn, Bill McCartney of Colorado. And we're going to see Colorado next week in a full national telecast at 11 a.m. Central Time as Colorado comes calling in Lincoln. So it is Tyrone Wheatley now, the single back for Michigan from the Illinois 38 yard line. Collins keeps it, wants the throw, dumps it off to the tight end, Cooper. And Pierre Cooper picks up about five yards. Takes a lot of abuse in the process. Collins wanted to go big. His man was not available, so he just dropped it off to the big tight end. They're moving Collins around, getting him outside the pocket. Illinois not only leads the Big Ten Conference in, in, in a lot of the top categories. They also lead in quarterback sacks and third down defensive efficiency. So they're good all the way around. I think philosophically what Michigan's offense has brought to the ballpark is good. They just haven't executed. This is Tyrone Wheatley. And that'll be a first down for the Wolverines inside the Illinois 25. Eight of nine. 51 and 52 Wheatley has 18 100 yard games in his career. He started as a freshman. This is his fourth year at Michigan. He has 10 carries today for 33 yards. He's the single back. Double tied in. Cooper and Remus now both in. Timing pattern, pass is caught, and the man is out of bounds right on the marker. It will be around the 14-yard line. It's a money tumor, and he caught the ball in front of Crumpton. 1-14 remaining in the first half of play with Illinois leading Michigan 7-6. Those are the scores around the Big Ten today, and that was a big win for Ohio State. Ugly thing for the Boilermakers. It was their first loss. In the conference. Yeah. In the conference. Yeah. And uh, it seems like, like Ohio State. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Northwestern it may be one of the, the, aside from Purdue, one of the most improved teams in the yep. conference. Wolverines with two timeouts remaining. Collins. Here's the ball on the first down play from just inside the 15. And Wheatley doesn't get much. Maybe a yard. And at 114, you've got a timeout call. 109 it is. Boy, you could go blind trying to read that scoreboard. From here, anyway. 
Miami, still a team. They're ranked six now, but I still think that's a team that could win a national championship. They're, they're coming back. They got even with, with uh, West Virginia from that loss uh, last year. Florida State didn't exactly blow Clemson away. Did they, they had a week off after their loss to Miami. Texas started a bit slowly against SMU. The Ponies had a lead for a while, but those uh, seven players that didn't play against Rice have been reinstated to the team. Yeah. Virginia Tech is at Miami next week. And uh, Boston College obviously is on Miami's schedule, but uh, uh, that game is also in Miami. Miami's toughest road game is going to be in Syracuse. How about Duke, 7 0? How about Boston College and Rutgers, 7 7 time? Fred Goldsmith at Duke doing a nice job. Huh? That's a bit of a surprise at BC. You can't let down much at any time because uh, the 85 scholarship thing is going to level it out even more. Yep, that is so true. The limit of 85 scholarships are going to send more players, better players to other places. Spread them out. Yep. Second down, call it 10. Collins, out of hurry, throws it away. Oh, I tell you what, he took a lick too. Simeon Rice and Rod Boykin planted him. And Collins gets up very tenderly. Simeon Rice, third year here at Illinois, was not highly recruited out of uh, out of high school. In fact, he was a running back. And a defensive uh, linebacker, not highly recruited, missed his bus on his uh, recruiting trip down to Illinois, had to catch a second bus. Denny Marson says he, they're glad that he caught that second bus because he has been outstanding. Still wants to be a running back at Illinois, they say. It's third and ten. Wheatley cannot get the first down. They take him out at the nine-yard line, and that'll get Remy Hamilton and company back into the ball game. Illinois had the coverage downfield. You got 57 seconds after the field goal. Illinois will have some time with the ball. A lot of youngsters from Chicago playing in this ball game. Number eight, we saw a moment ago, is Antoine Patton. He is out of Chicago as well. Now here is Hamilton for a 26-yard try. He's been good from 35. He's good from 32, and this one is also good. And so three field goals by the Michigan Wolverines offense here in the first half, and they go back into the lead by a score of nine to seven. 53 seconds remaining in the first half of play. College football doubleheader next Saturday here on ABC. That'll be at 11 a.m. Central Time. And uh, boy, is that a big one in, in the oh, whole structure yes. of college football this year, huh? Yes. Tommy Frazier, of course, is not returned and will not return this year for Nebraska, their all-star quarterback. Tom Osborne getting his offense in a little bit different way since the loss of, uh, of uh, Tommy Frazier. The old-fashioned way. Oh, yep. Run over you. Yep. Second half of the doubleheader will feature these games. Ohio State at Penn State. And Penn State, of course, number one in the country right now. So those are all good ball games. Yep. Great uh, day of college football next Saturday here on ABC. Now Lynn Swan. Well Keith just an update on injuries. Irons who came out early he had a little a burner you know a, a nerve injury to the shoulders. Zinkowicz had a bruised elbow. Dyson who went off the field for an x-ray came back. The x-rays are negative. He really wants to go back in the game but the head trainer Paul Schmidt I think would like to keep him out. Keith. And the kickoff is high and short. Illinois will get pretty good field position out of this. And 
Apparently they didn't get as much as I thought they might because the coverage is pretty good and down at the 24 is Toriano Woods who is a wide receiver by trade on the receiving team. Illinois now with two times out remaining and I apologize for the grammarians for having said times out a while ago. <laughs> yeah, just find one of those grammarians in the crowd. He's sitting right next to you. <laughs> no, not him. No. <laughs> well, we got to get these cameramen in shape. <laughs> On first down, Johnson rifles a shot that is incomplete. Penalty flag got there in the judgment of the official infraction too soon. Ty Law belted Jasper Strong. But the man uh, in the striped shirt was standing right behind him and felt it was too soon. On the defense, spot foul, first down. This throw is going to be coming right at you. Ty Law, number 22, is one of the top corners. That was close. Yep. That was close. Ty Law, one of the top corners. In the nation, not only in the Big Ten. Probably it's didn't get many balls thrown his way, Keith. He wanted to do yeah. something. Yeah. All right. First down at the 33. Johnson steps away from the pressure, gets it off. Got a man down the middle of the field. And uh, he's very lucky he is not on the way to the infirmary after being high load. The ball goes over his head. It is incomplete. It was Jason Dulick, and I mean Jason took some abuse. He's six five. They almost cut him in half. But nice job by Johnson, the quarterback, in buying some time, moving around a little bit. On the other side, the Michigan defenders have to be aware of where he is and keep him in the pocket. He's quick, isn't he? Yes, he is. Got good feet. He's elusive. Yeah, that's, that's the way he beat Michigan last year. Yep. Sliding around, buying some time late in the game. Twenty-four. Good velocity on the ball. Completed to Jasper Strong up at the 42-yard line. Of course, having Greg Landry as his tutor can't hurt him. There are tricks to the trade, aren't there? Greg Landry? Yeah. Yep. Said he was a little frustrated when he first came because he had all these ideas. He wanted to come. He likes a lot of movement and motion, and it was just too much to put in. At one time, he's slowly getting some of his ideas in this year. Dothard trying for the first down and will have it. And that'll stop the clock as they move the chains. Now they're going to take a timeout. So they've got one remaining. I'm not sure that they were kind of indecisive whether they wanted it here because they had to stop the clock at 30 seconds because of the chains being moved. But then I saw uh, 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 Ty Dothard uh, calling time and Jason Dulick both. And so finally the officials recognized it. So you got a half a minute to play. You got Michigan leading Illinois by a score of 9 7. You got uh, the outcome of the game weighing heavily on what may happen in the Big Ten. Who goes where? And this is what we have for you on the Prudential Halftime Report. Be interesting to hear what Terry Bowden has to say, Bill McCartney. I, you can count me, and I step up readily and say so that a, the a team on probation I don't think ought to be ranked. Well, if, if you break the rules, you got to pay the punishment, and uh, maybe you got some of those players. Maybe you got some of those players uh, by doing things illegal, and that's what got you on probation. So you shouldn't be rewarded for for doing something that's not right. Of course, Terry Bowden and the people that are playing now probably had nothing to do with it. That's right. It's nothing to say that they haven't done a great <laughs> yeah. job and the team is doing outstanding in that win against First Florida. Game. But that's one of the major problems that the, the guilty people never get punished yeah. in the NCAA structure of things now because they just can't do it that quickly. On first down from the 45-yard line, Johnny Johnson has a man open. That's Dilger, and he drops the ball. They don't need to move the ball much further, Keith. There is a little bit wind behind them. They have an outstanding field goal kicker in Richardson who has kicked over 50. I think he's kicked 50 field goals in his career. Yeah, but Shupline, uh The kickoff he, guy. Yeah, kickoff fellow. He, yeah. uh, he just missed from 57 yards the other day. He has 20, uh, 20 coming into this ball game today, 21 out of 34 of uh, his kicks had been for touchbacks. So he really has a leg. 
Richardson's very right. strong. They just need to get a little bit further to give it a try. Shot. Well, there it is. Out of bounds. Good he call. did not get a foot down. Good call. Jim Klein, who has been a money man receiver for this ball club throughout his career here, he's a fifth year senior. And Jim Klein had the ball on the sidelines and did not get the foot down inbounds. Let's go back and take a look. It's right in front of the Illini bench. Klein's going to go straight up. You would think he was going to come down inbounds, but he kind of drifts, and that's the official is right there. Give him credit. Good call. Oh, it's third down. They got to pick up about 15 yards to give anybody a chance here, and that ball is overthrown and thrown into the bench area, incomplete, and it's fourth down. You hear a few boo birds in the stands. Uh, I think I think they like what Weaver was doing uh, on that one drive, but. Uh, you know, I said that to Greg Landry. I said, you know, I like what you're doing with the quarterbacks, getting the backup in there, but it just leaves yourself open for some criticism if the, the, the backup guy comes in and does well. Michigan has called a timeout here to talk about uh, this kick return. That, that is their last one, and time is about gone in the first half. Wolverines will go to the clubhouse leading unless we have something dreadfully untoward happen to them here. By a score of nine to seven, it has been a ragged offensive first half for both teams. Well, we we, we talked about in the opening, Keith, as far as uh, Michigan was concerned, and Moeller trying to get his team back. They've lost two uh, critical games to the number one and two ranked teams in the nation. He, more than anything, I felt he needed to get his team up. It appears like he has gotten them up. He has had some injuries in the first half, and he seems to have overcome over that. Overcome that. Here's a look at the bowl coalition. It's a combination of the two major polls. All right, here's your punt now as Michigan puts all, oh, they got 10 of them up there. No, they got nine up there. They got a protector on the far side, and Brett Larson's punt is a good one. It eludes the cover man for Illinois and trickles into the end zone, and Michigan will have the ball out of the 20. A 55 yard punt. That was a 55 yard kick for Larson. Here is the second 10. Colorado State and North Carolina both losing. Duke is one to go seven and oh. Been a while since the Blue Devils were that lofty. Yep. Did Steve Spurrier ever get seven there? When he was coaching at Duke? Oh, I'm but sure not he did. Seven and oh. They yeah. went to a bowl when Steve yeah. was there. Yeah. But not seven and oh. I don't think they were ran the first seven, no. Michigan will be happy. They're gonna to go to the clubhouse. Take a knee. Yep. So the first that half is, is over. Right. Champagne with the Michigan Wolverine leading the home team, Illinois, by a score of nine to seven. By a score of 9 7 at halftime. Keith Jackson, Bob Greasy, and Lynn Swan. And it's the first sellout crowd they've had since 1992. And would you believe shirt sleeve weather yes. in Champaign, huh? Illinois on the 22nd of October? Love it's it. 75 degrees at least around here today. We didn't expect there'd be a whole lot of offense in this ball game, and there hasn't. I think the thing that we may, we may see in the second half is. Uh, uh, Johnson uh, going to the sideline and Weaver uh, coming in and getting a little playing time. Uh, Illinois uses two quarterbacks. If Johnson doesn't get it done, uh, maybe in the first or second series, I think they're going to go to Weaver and see what he can do. Let's very quickly then bring you up to date on what has happened so far in the ball game as Michigan took a first quarter lead on Remy Hamilton's 35-yard field goal, three to nothing. Then in the second quarter, things got a little looser and we had more mistakes as Hamilton cashed in a 32-yard field goal. Michigan frittering away two good scoring opportunities with their own mistakes. It was 6-0. And then uh, uh, Weaver, Scott Weaver, came into the ball game and uh, came up with a rather dramatic finish of a possession. Uh, the pass down the middle setting up the touchdown to Strong. And uh, then he cashed it in with a play to Stelter. A tight end who's been here five years and just made his first touchdown reception. And here it is right here, a first down call inside the five-yard line. A great time to, to throw 
Could have read it in right there, but Weaver says, whoa. Now he says, just get rid of it and come back again. And how he finds the tight end in the end zone, just an outstanding play by Weaver. And that may be the reason right there why you'll see more of him in the second half. Hamilton then uh, with a 26-yard field goal to make it 9-7 lead Michigan at halftime. So what is there to be done now other than uh, we see Weaver coming and perhaps uh, showing up more for Illinois? What about Michigan? Well, I think Michigan has got to be pleased with where they are. They're on the road, on turf, against the top defensive team in the conference, and they have a chance to win in the second half of the ball game. I think they have to play a little bit better, eliminate some mistakes, and, uh, you know, who knows? What do you think about that number 14 you just saw there? <laughs> He's uh, had made any had made any mistakes yet today. <laughs> <laughs> the Big Ten structure now uh -huh. beginning to take a little more of uh, a positive shape here, uh, becoming uh, Purdue, for example, losing yeah. today roundly at Ohio State. So they're now two one and one. The winner of this ball game uh, is going to be a prime pursuer of Penn State. Well. In, in fact, L Illinois, by winning the rest of their games, can can win the Big Ten championship go and go to the Rose Bowl. So they control their own fate now that Purdue has lost. And Penn State will be here at Memorial Stadium on the 12th of November, where it can be cold and windy. And this is a turf field. So it's a field that Penn State is not used to playing much on. Just as Michigan, I think, today is having a bit of a problem. There's with no it. question it's an adjustment. One note, uh, Mike Gillette's uh, 18 field goals in a single season set back in 1988. Uh, Remy Hamilton uh, could tie that with one more. Bert Schuplein will kick it off now for uh, the Fighting Illini, and 21 of his 34 kicks coming into the game today were not returned. But... Michigan has returned some of that. Wide receivers Mercury Hayes and Seth Smith are waiting for it, and they will not return this one. Shoeplan drilled it. And so Michigan will take over first down at the 20, and here are some of the numbers at halftime. Plays are 33 28 in favor of Michigan. Michigan with total yardage 184 to 121. Both teams with a turnover. Illinois not getting much done offensively except on the one drive, and that was engineered by Scott Weaver. And earlier, Ohio State over Purdue 48 So Michigan sends out Todd Collins, Shea Foster, Tyrone Wheatley. The wide outs are Amani Toomer and Mercury Hayes, and the tight end is Remersma. Mike Sullivan is in at tackle, replacing Wines. And some pressure on Collins. He's got the ball away, but it is underthrown, and Simeon Rice was climbing up his back. Incomplete. Amani Cooper. All right, Michigan in the first half offensively. Let's look at the numbers. Well, let's look at possessions first of all. The two times they scored, they scored on their first possession, and then when they got the ball in the Illinois 45 and the Illinois 38. They got field goals both times. Should do a little bit better if you get the ball in that good a field position. Second down and 10 from the 20. Wheatley. To about the 27. Take a look at the offensive leaders. Uh, Collins was 10 of 13 and 123 yards. The interception didn't make any difference in the end zone. Wheatley only 11 for 33 yards, and Biak Matuka had five carries. And Toomer, four receptions. Hamilton, three for three in the field goals. He's done all the scoring. Not much snap, not much quickness, not a feeling of quickness. Minnesota upsets Wisconsin. They beat them last year, and they've done it again this year. All right. That's good to Hayes. No, it's not. Number 21, Scott Turner, who has been picked on in this ball game by Michigan, laid a hit on the receiver, Mercury Hayes, and knocked the ball out. The Illini, I might tell you, have not allowed any points in the third quarter to anybody this year. And only 
two touchdowns all in the second half all year, and those obviously coming in the fourth quarter. So they get tougher after halftime. Craig Baker is in the punt for Michigan, and Martin Jones is back, and you've got 10 up on the line. Going after him, kick it away. And a fair catch by if, Jones. If they would have had a block on, they would have blocked that punt. They had a return on, and they weren't even rushing. 37-yard putt, and here's Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, at halftime, I talked to Gary Mullen. It was interesting watching him throw the football on first down because he told me what he wanted to do was run the football. He gave respect to the defensive front line of Illinois, but said in order to protect the quarterback, they wanted to run the ball. Also, Paul Schmidt, the trainer, they said they were addressing nine different injuries for the Michigan State Wolverines, and Dyson is going to put on a special shoe with a steel shank in it. Hopefully, it'll give him enough support to play. Keith? Ty Dothard steps in there as a single back now for the Illini. Number 83 is Jason Bulick in motion. And they run it. Two yards. Illinois had the ball six times in the first half. They scored on their fourth possession. They fumbled their second possession, but they didn't have the ball for very long. Look at the number of plays. Nothing more than six plays in any drive. Here's the uh, offensive leaders. Weaver was four of five, 59 yards. He directed the one touchdown. Dothard for 20 yards led the rushers. He didn't gain one single yard rushing in the second quarter. Johnson swings it out, bounces off Dothard and off the field. Steve Morrison, had, the way things had worked out on that play, the linebacker Morrison uh, had to come out inside and cover that running back, and that's a mismatch. I mean, if Steve can keep him going sideways, that's fine. Yes. But going well, north and south. There's uh, a screen, Keith. And, and one of the things that Illinois did in the first half well was throw some screens. One way to stop the screens is man coverage, the linebacker going out right now and covering the back. Johnson has missed his last four passes. Blitz, Blitz up the middle. That is the third time it was Clarence Thompson, the free safety. The defensive line can't catch Johnson, so send the defensive back. Send the strong safety, Clarence Thompson, number 17, and he's going to get there. Coming from the left side of your screen, right there, comes up the middle. The linemen see him late and don't adjust. And Brett Larson rifles one downfield. Toomer takes it on the 28. Look out! Look out! I don't see any flags. Turner's after him. Can't get him. Touchdown, Michigan! <laughs> Forty-seven yard punt. 72-yard return. I think you said it earlier in the game, Keith, that the special teams in a game like this may be the difference. He's going to get a block. Not that one, but he's going to get a block. Once he gets around the corner. Watch up here, this next block up right up here. Now watch this one. And one. That one there. <laughs> and there. I think that was Diallo Anderson, number 20. Yep. He took out three people. Hamilton's extra point is good. And it's Michigan 16 and Illinois 7. Here's a look at Delu Tepper during the timeout. He was giving the side judge a piece of his mind, obviously thinking that there was some kind of illegal block, a clipping, pushing in the back on that return for a touchdown. Well, I looked at it very hard because it looked like it was going to happen, but yeah. I don't think it did. I, I agree with you because uh, that's the first thing you're always looking for, and there were some blocks that weren't made because they would have been clips or pushing in the back. Here's the kickoff. Martin Jones. And Jones comes to the 35-yard line. Illinois starts now with good field position. 
And Scott Weaver comes out at quarterback. Let's go back and take another look at that punt. Punt return. Right here is where I think the first Luther, one right, right there. there. I think that's the one that had him upset. Yeah. Michigan came into this game last in the Big Ten in punt returns, oh, averaging only 2.2 on each punt return. They had had nine. That one made up for a lot of them. Scott Weaver has it blocked as he delivers it at the line of scrimmage. Weaver had one possession in the first half and drove them down for their only score. And I think this is good by Greg Landry. And I say Landry because Lou Tepper allows Greg to run the offense. He is almost the head coach of the offensive side to put in Scott Weaver, handle the quarterbacks the way he wants to put them in. It's four out of six, 59 yards and a touchdown in that first half. Robert Holcomb is the single back now. The freshman running back from Mesa, Arizona has the ball. Got some speed. And he is taken down at the 42-yard line, short of a first down. And taken down by Chuck Winters, number 35, who did not start the ball game this week because it was in his neighborhood that Bobby Ingram caught the winning touchdown pass last week for Penn State. Matt Dyson has returned to the field of play as well. So now on third down and three, they're anticipating pass. Weaver out of the shotgun. Gets it away, the pass is completed for a first down to number 23, Jim Klein. And here's Lynn Swan. After Michigan scores in the third quarter, there must be wonder down on the field. Well, Keith, this, if you believe in trends, this is a very pivotal quarter because this is the best scoring quarter for the Michigan Wolverines, having scored 74 points coming into this ballgame. And remaining. not until the return by Armani Toomer had the Illini defense given up a touchdown in third quarter. So we have to keep an eye on them. Well, they, they really didn't give up a score. The defense didn't give no. up. Special, Special teams. teams. Yep. This is Holcomb. And not much. Holcomb is very quick. I would imagine that you'll see and hear a lot of, about him before he's finished here. Yep. Ran for 100 yards for the first time in his career last week against uh, Iowa. Shane Fisher was in for the one play and comes off. Jasper Strong comes way down to the bottom of your picture. You don't see him now. Law comes over to cover him man and Scott Weaver throws the other way. The pass is completed and very close to an out. He hit the chalk at the 48-yard line of Michigan, so he's about three or four yards short. It was Ken Dilger, number 89, the tight end. 87. Yeah, 87. What is that, Mariah Hill, Indiana? Yeah, it's right near Evansville. Is it? In fact, Illinois has uh, four starters, I think, from Evansville. Uh, Hardy, you mentioned, Edwards. All the Michigan 48. They're making third down, and it's almost five. Weaver has Klein over the middle, goes to the other man, Dulick. He had Klein wide open. I mean, there wasn't anybody around him. Weaver buying time, sliding around, looking left the whole time. That attracts defensive backs when you look that long. And Ty Law got in and broke it up. So here's the punt. Larson gets it off. Toomer drifts under it. Won't have a chance at this one because it takes a Michigan bounce and comes back up the field and goes out of bounds near the 24-yard line. Wolverines lead it 16-7. to College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We are driving excitement. And the beer that's colder, bolder, yet smooth as ice. Molson Ice from Canada, the land where ice was born. 
72,600. Well, I'm going to call it the 23 because it is much, much closer to that hash mark than it is the other one. And here we go with Michigan possessing the ball, leading by nine points, having scored against Illinois in the third quarter. And Tyrone Wheatley showing his power as he rambles around left in for eight yards before Antoine Patton finally gets him down. Antoine's another one from Chicago. Tyrone Wheatley from Inkster, Michigan. He needs 20 more points. With his name at the very top in Michigan football history, scoring. Comes in averaging 132 yards a game, in case you're wondering. Second down and two. Collins steps away from the pressure and now takes off for the first down. Still going and slides under the would be tackler at about midfield. So Todd Collins has a big gain on the play, and the Wolverines have the first down. Man coverage in the secondary causes the linebackers to be preoccupied, running around trying to cover people, and there is nobody there when he breaks through the defensive line. They have really effectively taken the Illinois linebackers out of things through much of this ball game. Well, especially on those scrambles. Collins uh, has scrambled for a lot of yardage. Ed Davis checks into the backfield for the first time today at tailback for the Wolverines and gets the ball. Fresh legs. And he's at the 45. That's about a five-yard pickup. And here's a comment from Lynn Swan. Keith, you and Bob were talking about Collins and his scrambling. One of those nine injuries going in at halftime was his right elbow. The first time he scrambled in the first half, he came down on this turf pretty hard, and that right elbow was swollen up just a little bit. So when he slides, he's going to go down very carefully. Keith? Yeah, you can see it looks like a tennis ball. Well, that's one of the things that he can control. I mean, he should he should slide. He, he needs work at uh, sliding and going down the way he wants to instead of going down hard, especially on artificial turf. Yeah. That'll be no fun tomorrow. Second down and five. And well, Davis just runs into the stack. Mick Johnson from Anselm take him down. Right here, Keith, 94. He's going to beat the center. Watch how quick he is as he gets around. You don't hear much about the nose man. You hear about the linebackers and about Simeon Rice, but you got somebody that's quick, like Mickey Johnson. Came in a little bit overweight, is starting to lose some of that weight and regain the quickness that he had last year. He's still a large child, 281 pounds. Yes, yes, yes he is. Oof. This, this Illinois defense is Lou's not happy about something else. As a, as a veteran defense, Keith, they have six seniors and five juniors on the squad. It is third down and three. Michigan three out of nine on third down conversion tries today. That is man. That's a first down just short of the 35 yard line to the tight end Reavers. Here's uh, Reamers, but here, watch as Collins is going to look the other way, and I think he's going to look, watch number 40, the linebacker, that's Howard. He sees him looking the other way, then he goes back away from him, and then he comes to Reamersma, who was an outlet, probably the third uh, choice on that route. First down, call it the 36-yard line, and Collins still has it, wants to go for a tumor, and it is overthrown beyond the end zone. And Amani never knew where the ball was. He was looking the whole time for the ball and never saw it. Trevor Stargill was the man back there with a chance to possibly intercept it, but it was thrown too far. Tomorrow night on ABC, an all-new Funniest Videos, followed by new episodes of On Our Own and Lois and Clark. Then Arnold's back in one of his biggest Terminator 2, they call it. That's on the Sunday night movie. Close the windows tomorrow on ABC. Chris Howard is on the field now for the Illini at a running back position. Oh, yeah, Illinois, Michigan. 
Chris Howard is a freshman. And another one of those uh, next year when Wheatley's gone probably will step up in the reloading process. Right. And he hasn't played a lot this year. And the reason he is playing is because of the injury to Bianca Patuka. Uh, true freshman. But you're right, Michigan. He and another kid, I think his name is Floyd, uh, an outstanding freshman running back that they have on the team. Michigan having trouble getting 11 people out there in the right place. Third down and six. And they get it off with three seconds showing, and Ed Davis breaks it up the middle. So Davis bringing fresh legs to the attack here in the third quarter, pops one out of traffic, and the Wolverines are now threatening inside the 15-yard line. Watch a trap, number 73 from the left side will go to pull across. That's Marinero. Also Sullivan, 61. Got to get out of the hole. There's a big hole in there, and uh, Sullivan and Marinero. Davis kind of a the forgotten guy, Keith. Yep. Uh, he was a starter early on, wasn't he? Well, he was. He got some playing time. Alternating, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, but with Bianca Batuka playing so well, he didn't play much. First down, the ball is just inside the 14. That was the longest Michigan running play of the day, 19 yards. And here goes Davis again. And gets a greeting down around the 10. Same play, or at least very similar. Both offensive linemen pulling to the left. Antoine Patton gets credit for the tackle. Illinois has not allowed a third quarter touchdown against their defense all year. Second down and seven. The touchdown that Michigan scored on the punt return is not considered against the Illinois defense. It's against special teams. Davis again. Searching his way a bit that time and lost some of his momentum as a result of it and is taken down near the seven yard line. Third down and four now for Michigan. The ball is just short of the Illinois seven. This group has been together a long time. I'm talking about Illinois defensively. I mentioned in the opening, eight of those players have started for three years at least. Howard has started all four years. Here is a substantial play in the whole scheme of things. And Todd Collins is not comfortable, so he calls timeout. So let's wait and see what happens. That's what happened today so far in the Big Ten. Now the Ohio State win gives the Buckeyes a 3-1 conference record. And Michigan State drops out of sight as well. They've now lost three. Ed Davis is the single back. He's got the ball. He bounces outside. He scores. Penalty flag. So hold it. Carrier number 26, Ed Davis. Hold the flag. Umpire through it. On the point. Got a call holding against Michigan. Oh my goodness. This is the third time in the ball game that Michigan has lost an opportunity of scoring because of penalty. Critical. Critical play. You're allowed to extend your arms. Just whether or not he, uh, whether the official saw a hand that was clasped with some jersey in it. So look at the big kid Runyon. He was a basketball player. Didn't start playing football until his junior year in high school. Ball comes back now to the 14-yard line. Davis remains the single back. But this has got pass all over here. Dump it off to Davis. But the three. Illini waiting for him at the 10 yard line and I mean to tell you they take him down. So this defense Keith is so good 
that having scored on the previous play, you've got to be careful that you don't turn it over. Nobody blocks Simeon Rice. Collins is just going to have to throw the ball over. That's why it was thrown so high, allowed the defense some time to get up. Now you go for the field goal. All right. Hamilton, if he is successful here, can tie the record of Mike Gillette, 1988. 18 field goals in a single season. He's done it. And Michigan's lead grows to 19 to 7. But when you consider the opportunity they had, that they had a man in the end zone, yeah. huge difference. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's almost got to be a relief and, and some kind of motivation for Tepper for his troops. Hey, we're not down 23 to 7. It's only 19 to 7. We're only down by 12. They didn't get the touchdown. Let's make something out of it. Coming up next Saturday on ABC Sports, we've got this national telecast to start things at 11. Virginia Tech, Miami. Very interesting. Well, he's been the offensive threat for the Wolverines. Uh, their offense has not put it in the end zone. They have four field goals and a punt return on the special teams. Four times the Michigan's been inside the Illinois 20 and, and not scored a touchdown, and that's not a very good kick by Hamilton. I think they're doing it on purpose. Are you? Yeah. yeah. Must, must be yeah. because we know he can. Yeah. If you can't job kick it that. all the way out, just kick it high and give your coverage uh, team some time to get down. Platt gets about a 10 yard return on that one. And Illinois sitting up there in pretty good shape at the 30 yard line. Scott Weaver is the quarterback. And uh, that's a bit of a shocker there in the Big Ten as Minnesota beats Wisconsin again this year. And the Paul Bunyan axe. You know, they found the bacon. Well, it was the original trophy between those two teams. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. They found the bacon. Uh -huh. in somebody's old briefcase uh -huh. in Wisconsin. Up in, some, uh, in, the, uh, in the attic. The attic somewhere, yeah. Scott Weaver throws quickly. Complete to Douthard. And Douthard is up to the 40. Short by a yard of the first down. The crowd today is 72,677. Sell up. Time, Lloyd Carr, Keith uh, blitzing uh, into two inside linebackers. They've had a little trouble in certain instances of getting uh, all the seats covered down here in Champaign. But the team is coming, and it's a relatively young team. The offensive line's got to be rebuilt. But they lose some of these linebackers, but it's it's a team for the future. That's uh, about three yards, maybe, for Holcomb. Holcomb being one of those for the future. There's Lloyd Carr, the Michigan defensive coordinator. Lloyd said we're just giving up too many points. He doesn't, he's not concerned about the yardage. That's how they're ranked, but giving up too many points and too many big plays. Deal with some injuries here today, but most of those, Dyson, number 91, Irons has been back, and Zinkowitz, all who went out earlier with injuries, are back. Holcomb getting the first down, and uh, the ball will be snapped at the 43-yard line as Weaver drops. And the pass is on the money, right on the number one, but Jasper Strong, the senior out of Chicago, and that's another first down for Illinois. Well, first of all, nice pass protection. Strong takes the inside release. That's Noble, who is starting in place of Deion Johnson, who is not here with a thigh bruise. It takes, it takes a long time to run that route. You've got to have good protection. Put the ball at the 42, Michigan side of the field. Strong has caught three balls for 56 yards now. Weaver gives it to Holcomb, and he moves for two to the 40. Johnny Johnson had a little trouble getting things going against the Michigan defense. Weaver came in and put the only touchdown on the board in the first half, and he's back here in the third quarter. Looking pretty good again. He started the second and third games of the season, Keith. He came in completing over 50% of his passes and two touchdowns and a couple interceptions, but he's moved them. Second down and eight. Take 
checking what they're giving him. Dumps it to Dothard. And Steve Morrison takes him down. Steve Morrison, who is ranked among the all-time tacklers at the University of Michigan. He's a good player, Keith. Fifth-year uh, senior. He was injured a couple of times, led the team in tackles two years ago. Four of the six games this year, he has led the team in tackles. It's either been he or the other inside linebacker, uh, Irons. He has nine today. Dothard is back there with the quarterback, Weaver. Ball is drilled to complete to Shane Fisher, who's another one of those tough guy catchers. And he reels it in at the 23 of Michigan, and it's another first down. Take a look at the crap pass protection. We're always looking downfield. Watch from behind the quarterback as no Michigan Wolverine are going to get close to him. He sets up, throws it over the uh, linebacker, Morrison. That's a nice throw. Good job by the offensive line, too. Got that man wide open on the sidelines. That's Holcomb, the tailback. He just circled out of the backfield and was wide open. And here's Swanee. Keith, you know, Scott Weaver, his favorite quarterback happens to be Joe Montana, who uh, is from western Pennsylvania. But uh, his father, him being from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, actually played baseball with Joe Namath. So it's not a wonder that Scott Weaver probably is thinking about trying to emulate those two people this afternoon. Keith? 11 out of 14, 118 yards. He's hit his last five passes. He's got second down and one. All at the Michigan 13. That ball come out? Yeah, he didn't get. He didn't get. Michigan's got it. Yeah, he didn't get the uh, handle. Never got it. Cradled and put away. And Illinois turns it over, and that's a killer. They had a drive going. They had Michigan on their heels, and they cough it up. Holcomb never got possession of the ball. Illinois came in to this game. Let's take a look at it first. Yeah. Now that's on the quarterback. The quarterback has got to get the ball to the running back. The running back is not looking for the ball. He is looking at the blocking and the holes. It's the quarterback that has to get the, the ball in there. Now, if he put it in there and the, and the running back didn't clamp down on it, then obviously it's not the quarterback's ball. Ed Davis stays out on the field, has the ball, the tailback for the Wolverines. And from the 14, gets out to the 17 for a pickup of about two and a half or three. Keith, that is the 12th fumble that uh, Illinois has lost this year. We've played a little over six games. They've lost 12 fumbles. We've played three. 19 to 7. Michigan leads. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC station. Take a look at this uh, fumble again. Watch the running back, Holcomb. He's going to clamp down on the ball a little bit soon. Watch him. He closes his arms too soon, but sometimes different quarterbacks will hand it off different ways. If he was working with Johnson a lot, maybe Johnson got the ball back to him a little quicker, and maybe Weaver didn't get him that quick. That's one of the problems of alternating quarterbacks. Ed Davis is the tailback, and he just ran for another first down as he gets it up to the 28-yard line. Now let's check in again with John Saunders. Keith, Alabama trailed 10-0 to Ole Miss at halftime, but first and goal at the two, Sherman Williams fights his way. He's actually stopped at the two and then gets it into the end zone. 10-7, Ole Miss still leads. Keith. Well, pretty good scuffle. Michigan, prior to that last play, had 1,438 yards running and 1,438 yards passing. That's incredible. Collins gets his ball off down the middle for Mercury Hayes. Double coverage, penalty flag. He threw the flag and pointed right at Antoine Patton. Well, we got an ISO for you. Mercury Hayes. On the freshman Stargell, 
Patton, number eight, is going to come in. The... Walked him away. Oh, that's, the ball. that's close. I mean, all three guys were going for the ball. Yep. I mean, you can't stop Patton on the inside, number eight. You can't stop Patton from going for the ball. Nope. That's a close call. He didn't, you know, if you don't see where the ball is and you turn and you run into him not knowing where the ball is, that is interference. There's your ball coming. You the ball get away from him. I, I really think that it was the quarterback's fault as much as it was Holcomb's fault for just a little bit of the timing of getting it in there. The interference penalty against uh, Illinois puts Michigan first down at their own 43-yard line. And Tyrone Wheatley is back on the field. That entire tailback core of uh, Wheatley, Bianca Batuka, and Davis being used today, and uh, Wheatley and Bianca Batuka are both dinged up. Here's a look at the numbers after three. Total yardage in favor of Michigan. The turnovers, Illinois. Look at Michigan. The rushing yards, 135. As you mentioned, Keith, 134 passing. They came into the game averaging 217 yards both rushing and passing so they are a very balanced team there's Bianca Patuka he's dinged up but he can play Davis been pretty good the time he's been in there this is Wheatley and some of the quickness seems missing he's taken down by Scott yeah. Turner exactly right Keith he's too anxious to go to the outside and not take it up north and south as we mentioned he was sick earlier in the week He was on IV, wasn't he? On the yep. Crowd of better than 72,000 on an absolutely gorgeous day in Champaign, Illinois. Getting close to midfield now. It's third down and three. Davis is the tailback. Pops out of the air and gets the first down at the Illinois 45. Davis doing a nice job of running, Keith. Take a look at the Pac-10 scores. That's a big ball game for Oregon if they could hold on and win that one. Wow. Ducks would be right back in the thick of things, wouldn't they? UCLA is giving Arizona all they yes, want. Yes, they are. For the second year in a row. Ryan Fien was sharing snaps this week at quarterback for UCLA. He's making a move. First down for Michigan at the 45 of Illinois. And this is Davis again. A little misdirection gets him about four yards on the carry. Penn State, of course, in the catbird seat in the Big Ten, idle this week, and will have Ohio State in Happy Valley next Saturday afternoon. But the key ball game, I think, for Penn State is going to be played right here, November 12. And if you don't think this is a tough place to win, I can give you several hundred folks who can tell you how and why. Second and six. That's about two yards for Davis. Davis had built kind of low to the ground, but he weighs 200 pounds. South Carolina, that was another game that uh, the Gamecocks had to win in order to keep their head above water and keep looking at a ball bit. Now it comes to third and four, and it's a long four for Michigan. Three teams. Uh, Idle. Alabama struggling again. Todd Collins on third and four, Let's. getting some heat, passes away, and great catch. That was a money catch by a money tumor. Tremendous athletic reaction by Tumor. Denny Marson, the defensive coordinator, bringing six, try to put some pressure on him. Tumor is just the outlet coming across, and he doesn't expect this ball this quickly. But Collins knew that he had to get rid of it. Watch the move that Tumor makes to control it. Yeah. Not bad. 
Wheatley is back at tailback now for the Wolverines on first down at the Illinois 31. Wheatley's got the ball, going to run a reverse with Mercury Hayes. And it's going nowhere. Too slow developing. That was like uh, Denny Marson was in the uh, offensive huddle and heard that reverse call. There's Denny. He says, hey, don't try that. I got that covered. My you know, creatures will, will yeah, eat you. Yeah, my creatures, my creatures are over there. Get you. <laughs> he looks you know, like he'd be fun to play for. Yeah, you know, you're right. You know, he coached he, at North Carolina, uh, and he coached uh, Lawrence Taylor. And he compares uh, LT, very, I mean, uh, uh, Simeon Rice, very favorably to the, the pass rushing skills. Of LT. Second down, 11 Michigan. The ball back at the 32. Ball dumped out to Wheatley, and Tyrone drops it. Never could get a handle on the thing. They had him pretty well roped in anyway. So it'll be third down and 11. And next Monday night, the Houston Oilers are still trying to get up off the floor from the very first week of the season going into Philadelphia against the Eagles and uh, that's kind of tough. We'll have it for you at 9 Eastern 6 Pacific on ABC's Monday Night Football. Is Randall Cunningham worth the price of admission or what? Huh? Certainly is. It's his, amazing uh, some of the things he does. His younger brother's having a pretty good season up in Canada. Is too. he? Yeah. Third and 11. Might not quite look for a minute like Wheatley might find his way through there. And you've got one of the Illini down field. It's Mickey Johnson, the nose tackle, number 94, heard on the play. Third and long. This time a little screen. Good call. You don't want to turn it over. You want to get a chance for a safe play to pick up some yards. Timeout for the injured player with uh, 10.37 to play in a ball game and Michigan leading by 12. State host Big Ten rival Ohio State or other regional action. It's game two of an ABC college football doubleheader next Saturday. Remy Hamilton is trying for a fifth field goal in this game from 41 yards. Hits the upright. And kicks away. He hits the upright from 41 yards, trying to break the Michigan record for field goals in a single season. Now let's find out more about the Utes from John. They're taking advantage of Colorado State mistakes at the 44-yard line. What a hole here for Charlie Brown just busted through. They go for the two-point conversion, get that as well to open up a 24-17 lead, then recover a fumble on the ensuing kickoff at the 19. They're marching again, Keith. Thank you, John. 19-7 here, and uh, here comes Illinois now from the 25-yard line with Scott Weaver at quarterback. They're down by 12 points. Weaver's pass is away. His man is over there. That's Holcomb, and Holcomb is taken out of bounds after about a four-yard pickup by Ty Law. Crowd is very quiet right now. And I got my Cunninghams mixed up. I'm wrong in suggesting that the Canadian Cunningham is Randall's brother. It's Sam. Sam Bam. Yep. Boy, what a what a full of fullback he was. Weaver now 11 of 14, 118 yards and a touchdown. And nine different receivers for the Illini have caught a pass. Second down, long five. Will Carr in the neutral zone. Middle guard. Big sophomore out of Dallas. Oh, Will can hear that dinner bell, can he? <laughs> That's cold. 
<laughs> Takes up a lot of room out there. You know, he, he jumped off sides and, you know, the ball was right in front of his nose, Keith, but that's a lot of times the nose guard, the guy closest to the ball and closest to the quarterback is the one you can pull off because of the, he can hear the quarterback the best and the voice inflection. Illinois rushing. They gained 26 yards in the first quarter, none in the second quarter, and only one here in the third quarter. Second down and a short yard after the penalty. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Steve Morrison, Dex, Robert Holcomb behind the line of scrimmage. Took him down for a two-yard loss. Number 36 coming right in that gap. They call that the A gap or the center guard gap. Morrison been an inspirational leader this not the quickest or the fastest but certainly one of the smartest and he knows how to read his keys and knows how to get there sometimes quicker than guys that are faster than he is he's got 10 tackles in the fumble recovery today not bad knows where to be third down and three and the pass is incomplete on third down and so the Illini now will have to punt it away and here's 20. Illinois side said that Mickey Johnson sprained his medial collateral ligament and he thinks he should be okay. Obviously, not for today's ball game. Keith. Well, that was that was a big series for Illinois not to continue to have possession of the ball. Yep. They needed to, that completion was was uh, critical. Brett Larson didn't quite get all of it, but he gets a good bounce out of it. The ball still kicking around inbounds and finally hits the chalk. Around the 19, where Michigan will have it first down. It's brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Payne Weber, we believe our most important investment is an investment in relationships. By Zima, a unique alcohol experience. Alcoholic beverage, Zima. And IBM, there is a difference. From the 19-yard line, first down for Michigan with Wheatley and Ritchie. Lined up, and Wheatley with the ball. And a penalty flag. Well, Jim Kimmeling threw that. He was looking at uh, Runyon, tangled up with uh, one of the Illini, and I think there's a shortage of patience out there today, and he just flagged him. So that's the second time today that uh, John Runyon has been hit with the flag. And while we mark off the penalty, I've got to tell you this story. The other night we're flying in, hour and a half late from St. Louis, and the pilot owner says it's a beautiful night for flying, 11,000 feet. We're on a commuter. And he says, over on the left is Springfield, and then a couple of minutes you'll see over on the right, Decatur, and the next town should be Champaign. <laughs> should be. <laughs> Did you have a lot of confidence in him? Well, I... <laughs> Left side of the screen, number 69, Runyon. Now, left arm, you just, you just can't do that. I mean, the, the offensive line, and he's been a good one for Michigan, probably one of their best, but that was a good call by the umpire, by the referee. First down and 22, and Wheatley pops out. And Tyrone runs the ball back out across the 20 to the 21 before Trevor Stargell brings him down. And there's another flag from the pocket of Jim Kimberley. And I guess it's not Jim. It looks like it must be the umpire, and it's going to be holding against Michigan. My goodness. Pretty sloppy game, actually, today. Michigan, obviously, is tired. Coming up next Saturday on ABC Sports, a college football doubleheader starting at 11 o'clock Central Time, Colorado and Nebraska. That's a full national telecast. And then following that, you'll have Ohio State, Penn State, Virginia Tech, Miami, NC State, and Carolina, and Arizona, Oregon, an Oregon-Arizona game. If Oregon can hang on to beat Washington, becomes a pivotal ball game in the Pac-10. Michigan is trying to hold on to the ball. Watch the center, number 52. 
Grabbed him with his right hand. The umpire is standing right there. They're going to throw this ball out of the end zone. Collins has his arm hit as he delivered the ball. It is incomplete. He had Mercury Hayes on a fly, and he was belted by Simeon Rice. Simeon Rice, watch this now. The man inside of him, number 95. He is reading what Simeon Rice does. If Rice goes inside, he automatically goes to the outside. Simeon Rice, that's why he's caused so many fumbles. He leads the Big Ten in sacks and in caused fumbles. He is just so quick. But the man inside of him, Keith, is taught to read whichever way Simeon goes. He has a two-way go. He has no containment, just rush the passer. Wheatley is standing in the end zone and has the ball bouncing outside finding a little room gets out to the 10. So from the three to the 10 that's a seven yard pickup and a little bit of breathing room for the Wolverines. They're looking at third down coming up and 20. So the Huskies now have come back to lead the Ducks by three back 10. And Arizona by 10 over UCLA now. That game is in Tucson. Look at Utah. Yeah. You know, Utah played, uh, who was it? The Trojans, USC last year. A tough ball game. I want to bowl out there. But there, that whole whack bunch is pretty tough. Third down. And Collins takes off. And runs the ball out to about the 23, 24 yard line, well short of the first down. And uh, the, the, the Michigan people are. <laughs> Gary well, was out on the field. He had to come out and pull him off. But the, the problem with that series for Michigan is they had first downs on two occasions, and their offensive line, which has been a problem this year, they've got good skill players, they've got good running backs. The offensive line let them down again. They thought their quarterback might have been uh, hit a little late. Here's uh, Craig Baker now standing at the 10. We'll hit it at about the 14 or 15. Illinois showing rush, but they don't. They peel back, and Baker gets a pretty good punt upfield to Jones. And they take him down at the 37 yard line. 44 yard punt by Craig Baker. You've got 7 01 to play in the ball game, and Gary Moeller is. Still hot about his quarterback, he thinks, being hit late. And Arby, Illinois trail 20 quarterback right now. It's Scott Weaver. And we've got 7-0-1 to play, and it's 19-7 Michigan. There's plenty of time, but Illinois has to score. Underneath to Douther. Penalty flags down, and I expect you got a penalty coming up against Illinois here, pushing in the back, or it might even be clipping. Of course, it might be something else under the pile, too, that you can't see from here. But it looked to me like somebody hit Steve Morrison in the back. Tripping. It's against the Illini. Could that be a leg whip by somebody trying to block? Or, 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 or just, just plain tripping? Sure and simply tripping. So that runs the clock to 6.54 and backs the Illini up with a major penalty all the way to the 19-yard line. And time permitting, we invite you to stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report, the scores and highlights from across the country. As the clock continues to run at 6.50, Illinois now flagged eight times for an even 100 yards in the ball game. Weaver out of the shotgun, throws it down the middle, throws that ball sharply, has a nice tight spin on it, and he got there in a hurry to Martin Jones. Put it up on the 31, make it second down and 17. The 
away from the pressure, throws it down the middle, has a man in the middle, open Dulick, and it's a big play for the Illini. First down at the Michigan 37-yard line. Here's Dulick right here. Watch him as he's going to just come down the center of the field. It's going to be a two-deep zone. Watch the two safeties to the right of your side. He's just going to go right between them. Now, the thing that gets this play working is the fact that Weaver buys some time or that the defensive line doesn't keep him contained. Still working out of the shotgun. Still don't have any pressure. Throws for strong. Passes incomplete. Fight for the ball with Ty Law. Strong's a fifth-year senior, their best wide receiver probably, and Ty Law, as we mentioned, one of the best going up for it. Strong almost came down with it. If Illinois has a strength offensively, Keith, it's, it certainly isn't their run game. They're like near the bottom of the Big Ten, but passing, they are a good, very good passing team. In fact, they're 15th in the nation passing the football. Alabama's going to the lead over Ole Miss. We were on second down and 10. Comes this way with it and throws it low. And uh, Jim Klein, number 23, cannot reach down and get it. Jimmy Klein was the star of last year's game, along with yep. Johnson catching that pass. You know, his, his mother was the secretary at Ohio State for Woody Hayes. <laughs> Jimmy Klein. I'll bet she had some ringing ears sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Johnson on the sideline. He's been there most of the second half. Steve Morrison now totals 11 tackles in the fumble recovery in the ball game. Here's Weaver stepping away. He can hold it. And he's got a first down for the Illinois at the 23 yard line. And here's John Saunders. Keith, you mentioned Alabama had taken the lead over Ole Miss. Here's how it happened. That's Michael Proctor, 20 yard field goal would have tied the game. Patrick Hape actually pushed Alundis Bryce into the kicker. It's called roughing the kicker. They get another first down, and Jay Barker takes it in 14 10. Keith. They don't quit. Here they come. And his penalty flag he's finally taken down at the 37 yard line but you've got flags on it was Tyrone Noble that finally fought through and got him and Trent Zinkowitz who was involved in the pursuit is up hobbling around again holding Illinois Lloyd Carr the defensive coordinator got tired of dropping off so here he's going to blitz, going to blitz this man, and Noble is going to be on the outside. You need to get pressure on the quarterback. The defensive line cannot get there. They're not quick enough, so Noble coming around from the backside is going to run him down. Lloyd Carr, it's been a frustrating uh, few weeks. He's played the two top offenses in the country in Colorado and Penn State. That penalty will move the ball back to the 42-yard line, and there are the penalty totals. Nine on each team, and Illinois with the bigger ones. Yeah, you just, you just can't play solid football and overcome those types of numbers. It's hurt both teams today. And it's first down and 29 now for the Illini. Ellie just missing again. He dumps it off, and it is incomplete and almost picked by Tyrone Noble. Ty Dothard was the man trying to get They were trying to get it too. But they're kind of lucky to get that one back. Michigan defense has done a pretty nice job today, limiting Illinois to only seven points. Illinois came in averaging 450 yards per game the last five games and averaging 29 points a game. Illinois defensively has kept Michigan off the board as far as touchdowns are concerned. 5-18 to play in the game. 19-7. 
Michigan leads. Weaver's pass could be picked. Instead, no, it was almost caught by Klein. I'm telling you, Jim Klein, who's 5'10", 153 pounds of flypaper. <laughs> I mean, he is a tough little guy, and he almost caught that ball. Good protection. Watch this effort. He weighs 153 pounds. He's fighting him, isn't he? You betcha. Almost got it. He has 45 career receptions. He is the number three receiver. He comes in on slot uh, three wide receiver formations. Third down and 29. Gone right into the arms of Ty Law. He's got some help on the sideline. Got a convoy. There's a penalty flag back over here at the line of scrimmage. So Ty Law intercepts that and takes it to the Illinois side of the field. Let's see about the flag. in the quarterback against Michigan yep. Wow 10 penalties there there is another penalty there was a touchdown called back for one of these teams that's a big turnover that that could have been the, the ball game before the ball was thrown so it takes away the turnover another penalty it's an automatic first down sure it is you just can't commit. Both teams are stopping themselves with penalties. It's, I don't know what it is, Keith, if, if these players get tired, if the offensive linemen get tired and they hold, or the defensive men get so frustrated they hit the guy when they get there. Both teams have been guilty of it, and you don't win championships with this many penalties. I think he was roughing the quarterback. He was roughing the quarterback. Yep. That's an automatic first. That was, uh... Well, we're told in the, uh, the videotape replay in the truck that the quarterback was not touched. So it couldn't have been that. First down, anyway, for Illinois at the Michigan 27-yard line. Pass is completed to Dulich. And he's inside the 10 and taken down at the 8. And it's first and goal, Illinois. And the time remaining now is 4 minutes and 52 seconds. And a 12-point lead. This game was over. Let's go back to the play before the previous penalty. Obviously, we miscalled it. It was not roughing the, 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 the passer. There's a personal foul somewhere out there. Be thrown before the ball was thrown, or intercepted anyway. Before it was intercepted, yeah. For the end zone, touchdown! Do it! Yard scoring pass, and the numbers for Weaver now 16 of 24, 194, and two touchdowns. And Chris Richardson is in for the try, and it's good. And now it's a white knuckler. Illinois, the game was over. The interception, they were walking off the field, they got a second life. They come back in two plays and score a touchdown. They could win this game. 
All right, Illinois trailing now by just five. We'll kick off. Shoepline. Brett will hit it. He has a habit of knocking it in the end zone. Tyrone Wheatley he is deep. Michigan is suspecting onside try here. They've got receivers up, but he hits it deep. And it goes into the end zone and through the end zone and will come out to the 20-yard line. We have now been told, Lynn Swan relaying to us from the officials on the field, that it was a personal foul call against Michigan. A defensive lineman hands to the face of an offensive lineman. During the interception by Ty Law that wiped that out and gave the Illini life and the chance for what eventuated into a touchdown. And so now Michigan once again in trouble in the fourth quarter. Wheatley is the deep back. Home crowd in it again. They had a siesta in the third quarter. Todd Collins pass caught by Remersma up at the 26 yard line. To remake a point, Michigan has been outscored by the opposition in the fourth quarter, 55 to 36, coming into this ball game. Time remaining is 4.17. Second down and four. Wheatley with the first down at the 32. First downs are critical here. It was Michigan's failure to make a first down that cost them the Colorado game. Keith, let's go back. This is the this is the foul. Watch the bottom uh, defensive mind lineman as he makes his pass rush. At the very end, he's going to slap right here. We believe that that is the personal foul that was called that negated the interception that, followed, that was followed by the Illinois touchdown. So put the ball now at the 31 is where they mark it. First down for the Wolverines. And the clock running at 3.35 to play, 19 to 14. Wheatley with the ball. Caught at the line of scrimmage by Simeon Rice. We'll show you another look at this penalty that really turned this game around. Bottom rusher, number 92, I believe it is. He's going to hit in, and at the very end, watch his right hand. Tries to go underneath. Right there. That's a head slap. That is a personal foul, and it's a nice call by the official on the sideline. 92, Steve Evans. Yep. Second down and 10. Collins play action. Rumusma, the ball, finding some room and a first down as he gets across the 40 to the 42. So the big tight end, former quarterback, who now carries 252 pounds on his 6'6 frame, they'll move the chain. I think Gary Moeller maybe in the past sometimes he's been a little bit too conservative in situations like this. You can't just make running plays into the into the middle of this against this defense. You have to move it around. Certainly you've got to give it to a guy like Wheatley, but you have to throw the ball also. You've got to make first downs and take some time off the clock. Clock running 225. Here they come. Wheatley gets caught in the traffic and does not get back to the line of scrimmage. They stop him short of the 40. It's Paul Marshall, the backup nose tackle who stacked everything up in the middle. And time is called with 2.14 to play in the game in Michigan leading by five. Hurry, right, girls, before daddy. Tyrone Wheatley. They're relying on a tired athlete.
half lead right now but the big guys in there on 19 carries 65 yards today and he again is the single back on second down and 12 for Michigan. Todd Collins rolls it out and turns up field and he is taken down on a hard driving tackle. Number 10. You have 93 Marshall and Chad Cofer and Kevin Hardy all getting a piece of it. And Illinois now spends another timeout. They have one remaining. Michigan has two remaining. The time you saw there, 2-0-1. 1914 for the Michigan Wolverines. The genuine Chevrolet, most valuable players of the game for Michigan. Steve Morrison, linebacker, 12 tackles, a fumble recovery. For Illinois, Scott Weaver, 16 of 24 so far, 194 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for academic achievements and assist those in financial need. And I would kind of be surprised if he didn't start next week, wouldn't you? I would, because uh, early in the year, he lost the job. Johnson got it. I think he's earned it back. Michigan is looking at third down. There are the timeouts, as we told you. Timeouts remaining in this ball game will be very important as we wind along. Third down conversions, Michigan 7 of 17. you got to think that Weaver would like to get an opportunity to do what Johnson did to Michigan last year. Oregon's regained the lead against Washington by four in the fourth quarter. So the Oregon Ducks are not going down easy. Arizona wins by 10 over UCLA to remain undefeated in Pac-10 play. Penn State, Penn State, oh, look at Colorado State has come storming back to tie Utah at 31. Penn Michigan, State, who leads the Big Ten, is not playing today. Excuse Michigan me. makes a first down here. This could be the ball game. Third and eight. They didn't make the first down against Colorado and got beat. Pressure coming. Collins has time. Throws. Got it. He got the first down, and he got it, throwing the ball to his tight end, Jay Reverson. Big play. Big play. First down, Michigan. First down. Tackle made by Holosek, 52. Watch the tight end right here. He's just going to go down and hook. But the key is when Collins steps up in the pocket, Simeon Rice down here at the bottom of the screen is going to go upfield, and it comes inside. Two men blocking him. He steps up, throws a little hook pattern, Gain of 10 yards on the last play. Just past the first down. Nice call. You needed a first down. Michigan got it. Wheatley to the 40 of Illinois. That's about a six yard pickup for Tyrone. Nice the call. and I have spent their last time yeah. out. Nice call by Gary Moeller and his assistants on the sideline. We said coming in, Keith, that uh, his job was to motivate this team after a couple of tough losses, the toughest schedule in the country. Playing eight bowl teams from last year. They've been defeated by the number one and two teams in the nation. They haven't scored a touchdown against Illinois' defense. Offensively, Michigan hasn't scored. They've kicked four field goals and had a punt returned by Amani Toomer. That's been their scoring. 11 o'clock Central Time next Saturday in national telecast, Colorado at Lincoln against Nebraska, number two and number three. Followed by these regional games. So check your local listings or call your cable operator for the pay-per-view that might be available to you. So things are shaking out now today in the Big Ten. This one, 125 to play. Illini with no more times out. Michigan two. Michigan leading 1914. A big play by Collins. Senior, fifth year senior, underrated. I don't know why people keep talking about the Heisman Trophy. I don't know why people are talking about Kerry Collins and the Heisman Trophy. Penn State quarterback. <laughs> you bet. Yeah. 
That's Tyrone Wheatley carrying, and he does not get his first down on that carry. It was second down and four, and he picked up about two. There's that precious time ticking away. If Michigan can make a first down here, this ball game's over. But it's third and short, just like it was third and short against Colorado. And you've got to believe that Moeller and his assistants and his players are remembering that right now. We got a penalty flag, and Illinois might have been caught with an extra man on the field. I don't know. Let's see. I think that's what it was. I think the man didn't get off the field. Yep. That'll give Michigan the first down. So Michigan gets the key first down. With 43 seconds to play in a ball game. Because the extra man was on the field. And another big day for Dana Howard, the all-time tackling leader at Illinois. And not far from being the leading tackler in the history of the Big Ten. They got him at 20 today. Crowd of 72,677 came, their first sellout since 1992. And they bought the tickets on the right day because this one has gone for the last breath. And Collins now, after that first down, just has to get the clock rolling. And now Wheatley, one of the officials, is knocked down because Wheatley took exception to an Illinois man running into him after the whistles had stopped the play. And as the official came over to separate him, these are big people. Clock expired. And here are your Big Ten standings as Michigan wins this game 19 to 14. Penn State is in control of things right now. Ohio State winning today over Purdue 3 and 1. Michigan is now 3 and 1. So effectively, you have three teams right now running for it. The trip to Pasadena. Here is Lynn Swan. Thank you, Keith. Coach, this had to be a real tough one, but it seems like your team showed the character we talked about at the beginning of the ball game. Right, and I think we wanted to establish a run. It took us a long time. Uh, they did a good job taking a deep pass away. We kept wanting to go to that, and we tried that a several times. That's a good defensive team. We got a big uh, play on Amani on the punt return, which we've been looking for all year. And Lynn, as you know, I'm very happy. We got a tough schedule, and I know what awaits me next week. I don't care about any scores. And uh, we just got a tough, a tough schedule. We got to keep going. Well, talk about the physicality of this ball game just briefly. You had about nine guys that the trainer was looking at at halftime. Right. And, uh, you know, Wheatley got a hip pointer back, and I didn't know whether to do him. It was a very physical game, which we expected. We know that's the kind of defense they play. I didn't like to see the way it ended up. It looked like too much shoving. That isn't what we're all about in the Big Ten. Coach, thank you very much. Congratulations. Glenn, thank you. Keith? All right, the Wolverines win it 19 to 14 and stay in the hunt for the trip west. Illinois will be waiting for Penn State when they come in November 12. Monday night, ABC is back with the Philadelphia Eagles and Houston Oilers live at 9 Eastern time on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Good night.